just remember, God says you're much closer. Some of you right now, you're sitting here right now because you're frustrated because you've been going over and over and over and you seem like you've done everything, you've done it on time, and you think like you should be there. And God said, no, you don't get there until I take you there. And he told Abraham, he said, this time next year, you're going to have a baby. And so the third reason God took so long is because he had to change his partner. Woo! Come on, brothers, just look this way. Don't be getting scared. Some of y'all are, man, why you got to say that, Pastor? Why? But can you think of something else? But look, look, I got y'all. Some of the married guys, like, like oh, man. That man had to go there, man. He was doing good. He could have went out here to, why don't they do it? So, so he had to change his partner. The woman that he was with was an unbeliever. And she had transferred her faithlessness or her unbelief into him. So God is saying, your wife's name, Sarai, I need to change her name. And when I change her name, I'm going to bless her like I'm blessing you. I can't change you and give you all of that and she's still stuck on what I took you from. So just like I changed you and I changed your name, if y'all going to be together and she is Mrs. Abraham, I got to change her name too. Because let's just, let's just moonwalk back down the train tracks of this text. Come on, say amen, somebody. And I want us to pause as we purposely peek at some pertinent particulars. You got time? Say amen, somebody. When Sarai caught his eye, when, when, when she first caught his eye over in the old land, April, when she turned his head, or y'all know my grandma used to say, when she opened his nose. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen, somebody. When she had his nose wide open. Come on, say amen, somebody. When, 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 when Abraham got with the reverend, when he hollered and hooked up with her back in the ur of the Chaldees, she was barren then. She didn't become barren after they got together, after they left. She was barren in ur. And so I'm just wondering, here's my issue. Abram, yeah. if you heard what God said in Ur, all the stuff he's going to give you, why you still stay with her, marry her, and she was barren? Because that relationship, I'm going to talk about this next week, that relationship based on what God says seems like it's a contradiction to the promise. Come on, say amen, somebody. Because God promised you one thing, and he going to do this seed, and you got somebody who can't produce no seed, and you bounce with her anyway. Say amen, somebody. Abraham, I can hear Abraham saying, because now you know he got that faith, Reverend Scott. He says, I took her because I believe what God wants to do in my life is not based on who I don't have. But it's based on who I do have because whatever I have, if God called it, he's going to work it out. When God makes a promise, it ain't for you to figure it out. It's for you to just work and then walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. Pre Ooh, my God. So right there, this highlights Abraham's faith that he believed that God's word was more powerful than any imperfection. So God is like, Abraham... I've got to change her name because the covenant that I talked to you about is not just based on who it comes to, but it's also based on who it has to go through. And so it may come to you, but it has to go through. So can I preach up in here? He said, I got to change her name because how can two folk walk together? Except they, come on, say it, man, somebody. You, you can't walk when she going right and you going left and she going east and you going west. The Bible says, how can you walk together except you be agreed? He said, when I change her, he said, there will be a breakthrough in her barrenness and you all will be able to walk into fertility instead of fatality in your faith. Come on, say it, man, somebody. He says, then you will give birth to my promise. So I'm about to wrap it up, y'all, because too many people leaving already. I guess I must really be not preaching. Say amen, somebody. But anyway, but anyway, I want y'all to look at this. Now, when God told Abraham 
in Genesis 17 and 17, he said, man, I'm God. You should know that by now. He said, you're going to be a daddy. I thought Abraham would have been like, Cody. yeah, what my name is. He laughed. He acted like he was at a comedy show. <laughs> that, that's 17, 17. It's in your Bible, too, unless you tore it out. Then, 18 and 12, Sarah laughs. She cracking up. Man, God got jokey jokes. God, you, you, you can see us like, God, you, 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 you can't, can't be serious, God. He said, uh, uh, she says, Abraham said, we, we old. He says, I'm old, and she barren and old. Come on, say amen, somebody. Ain't that an exaggeration? Abraham is 99. And she's 89. And she's barren. Meaning that when the baby comes, he's going to be 100. And she's going to be 90. They said in human terms, you can't get no formula from that. I ain't talking about no baby formula. Come on, say amen, somebody. God says, that's what you got to understand when I make a promise. When you get out of it, and let me all up in it. Come on, say amen, somebody. God says, I will show up and show out. And if I said your blessing is coming next year, you just need to stand and wait till next year. So Genesis 17 to 21, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. All those is a year's time. Because Genesis 21 opens with fireworks. Love, America's love. I'm poof. Genesis 21. Because in Genesis 21, it opens up, and what does it say? And Sarah conceived. Chapter 18, 19, 20, that's all one year. And now catch this. Sarah gave birth to a son. And the son's name was Isaac. When God told Abraham that he's going to have a son, he laughed. When he told Sarah that she was going to have a son, she laughed. But when they had a son, his name was Isaac. And Isaac means that God has laughed. Come on, say amen, somebody. So somebody used to say that whoever laughs last, they laugh best. Come on, say amen, somebody. I can hear God saying, when I told you, when I told you, when I told you, Abraham, uh, that you were going to have a son, he said, Abraham, uh, you looked at me and you laughed, talking about God, you got jokes. <laughs> he said, Sarah, when I told you that you were going to have a son, he said, Sarah, you laughed. But what you didn't understand that the son that I gave you, um, his name was going to mean that God laughed. And he said, I got the last laugh. Do you hear what I'm saying? He said, Abraham, he said, Isaac was my seed. He said, I know that he's not your baby. Technically, first, uh, he's really your second baby. But according to me, he's your first baby. Do you hear me? I ain't have nothing to do uh, when you went down, went down with Hagar and did what you did. She dropped it like it was hot. And when y'all got done, she was pregnant with y'all's baby. He said, but when I promised, when I promised, uh, wow. When I promised, when I told you, I said that I was going to give you a son. Do you hear me? You went ahead of me and you made your own son. You said, Abraham, I ain't got no problem, but that's your child. He said, but the son that I gave you, do you hear me? When I gave you Isaac, that's the son that's going to be your seed. That's the son that his seed is going to be blessed. Grandchildren is going to be blessed. Great-grandchildren is going to be blessed. I got to get out of here, y'all. But tell your neighbor, don't. 
hold those who give up on God. Do you hear what I'm saying? You got to trust the Lord even when you can't trace them. I wish I had some help here today. I can hear. I wish I had somebody that really know us. Like Grandmama said, he may not come when you want him, but it's so never. So never, he'll be there on time. Do you hear what I'm saying? When it looks like uh, God uh, is taking his time, you got to pray and you got to trust God. And then when you trust God, instead of complaining, you will start singing, singing a new song. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not. Uh, Come when you want him. Oh, he no time. Wow, oh, he no time. Oh, he no. Anybody know his own time? Anybody know his own time? Tell your neighbor, let God do it. You'll get an Ishmael. Do you understand? God. Not, oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. Can I tell you the story? When it first happened, and she put girlfriend out, girlfriend went back in, but she put her out again. Do you hear what I'm saying? And the second time, I can see Abraham going to God. He's saying, God, you want me to put my baby mama out? And God said, Abraham, you got to do what she said, do it, because you was in the wrong. Do you hear what I'm saying? She may have suggested it, but you gave in to it. Do you hear what I'm saying? And baby mama, she got put out. I felt sorry for her when she got put out. She didn't get no great check. The Bible says that he gave his baby mama her child support. It was some water and a loaf of bread. Do you hear what I'm saying? You done suffered nine months long. You done threw up nine months long. Faced and got all fat nine months long. Gave up your figure nine months long. And I'm carrying your baby. And you gonna put me out with some water and some prayers you low down i wish i had some help but if you hold on uh, ah, hold on god will show up he said i want you to know i'm gonna bless ishmael but it won't be like isaac that was your product this is my promise i'm gonna bless i'm gonna bless but wait on god give god some praise Give God some praise. Some of y'all just grab your neighbor. Help me out and grab a neighbor and say, neighbor, just wait on God. It might seem like he's taking his time. It might seem like it ain't gonna never happen. But if you hold on, if you hold on, ah, hold on. Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Ah, won't it do it? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, now I know why it took so long. Because I want God to give up the goods, and I won't even be good. Come on, say amen, somebody. He cannot give you continuity when you insist on having a corrupted character. And you cannot win with a warped witness. You got to be who you say you are. Monday. Through Sunday. Just wait on him. Because you know, if his only son had to wait on him, on Calvary, if I'm Jesus and you my daddy, daddy, these nails hurt. Do I really have to stay three days? I already died. Come on, say amen, somebody. But he knew that it would be worth it because the prophecy was in three days, he'll get up. And you see what happened. When he was before the cross, he had a lot of power. When he got up, he had all power. He came up with more power than he went down with because he waited for the entire prophecy to be fulfilled. I hope this helps somebody. Get up off God. A lot of times, we're in our own way. A lot of times, the biggest enemy is the inner me. 
Pogo the comic strip said, he was running around looking for the enemy. Where he at, where he at, where he at? He stopped, he says, I found the enemy, and he is I. Sometime while you're looking, look in the mirror. A lot of us, we are stuck because we moved ahead of God. How did God let me get with this fool? Busting my head for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. God didn't let you. You chose. See, by the time we go to the club and go away and get who we want and then bring them to God, God bless this. I, I know he's still cussing. I know he got about, got about 20 kids. Come on, say man, somebody. 20 baby mamas, y'all don't help me. I know he can't keep a job, but he just finding himself. If he ain't found himself at 40, maybe he need to stay lost. Maybe he like being lost. I wish I had some help. You get somebody 40 years old, Tama. So, what's your vision for us? Well, let me think about that, baby, because right now, I'm finding myself. Where you working? I'm in between jobs. No, if you're in between jobs, you left one, and you got one that you interviewed for Monday that they said they're going to give it to you. That's in between jobs. If you ain't got no prospects, and you got fired, you ain't, tell somebody that you're unemployed. You jobless, uh, extend invitation, but you would never go wrong doing it God's way. Y'all know I'm writing this book that's coming out around Valentine's Day because is, is your relationship a right ship? And it tells you how to, how to build a relationship from the ground up. Single sisters, the model for a relationship is in the Bible. Before God gave Adam Eve, he first gave him a job, and then he gave him a residence to take her from. So when they say, well, I don't like working, they, they don't like eating. Because the Bible says, if you don't work, you don't eat. So that's your out right there. No, I, I want to eat, dog. I want to eat. I can't talk to him. But in that book, it tells you, let God do it. Bible says, what God has put together, let no man put asunder. Don't blame God because you got with somebody that didn't work. It wasn't God. God didn't put it together. He said what he put together, let nobody break it up. If you put it together, it was somebody that was breaking up while y'all was making up. Okay. If you're here today, if you're here today, I extend an invitation to life. You've never been baptized, invitation to life, new candidate for baptism. If you've been at church and ain't really been there, you've been there, but you ain't really there, then we here. If you got a church, but it ain't really home, when I ask you what your church name is, you got to think about it. And I say, the pastor, I believe it is. I would be so embarrassed y'all go somewhere. And you say, I'm from the faith, uh, the hotel, I think it's, I think it's house. Come on, say it, man, somebody. In my past, I think in my past is Wally, Wally Bound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you're here today, I extend an invitation. I extend an invitation to you. I got to get out your way. I took up too much of your time, but I had to tell you all, I had to tell you all that story. I just want to let you know. Sometimes businesses be like, "Is y'all pastor that crazy all the time?" I am. I didn't put no, I didn't know you was coming. So I didn't know to act. This is just who I am. But y'all know me. I will stand on my head if it gets a smile out of you. Yeah, I'm going to be comedic, but I bet you the word going to be on point. Right now, people heard that story, but they don't understand that one of the nuggets in that story is that both of them laughed, and then God gave him a son that meant God laughed. There's so much in that. God always has to laugh, laugh. So when God says something, don't laugh. Be like, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. But you so bad, you can't. Give God some praise. Amen. Let's move. Did that bless anybody? Come on, don't, don't be just saying that because I looked at you. Did that bless anybody? Well, some of y'all didn't say, yeah, until I looked at you. <laughs> I'm just playing, y'all. I'm just playing.